The Confederacy of Independent Systems made use of a huge arsenal of armoured vehicles during the Clone Wars, from large droids like the DSD-1 Dwarf Spider Droid to large tanks and troop carriers. But one of the largest and seemingly most powerful Separatist droid vehicles was apparently an uncommon sight, the Octoptara Magna Tridroid, the huge three-legged droid walkers most well known for their role in the Battle of Christosis. These behemoths were a terrifying presence on the battlefield, but what was the full extent of their capabilities? Was there a reason they didn't show up all that often? In this video, we'll be answering those questions. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Octoptara Tridroid was a Techno Union product and it owed its design and name to the Octoptaras, a non sentient species from the Techno Union headquarters of Skako. Octoptaras were gas bag headed, eight eyed creatures that had evolved to climb the thickly layered vine fields of Skako, typically kept by the Skakoans as pets. The creatures were adapted to the high pressure methane atmosphere of Skako and to the Skakoans who ran the Techno Union, the droids based on them would have been a familiar style of design. To the rest of the galaxy though, the Tridroids were distinctly alien. There were actually two types of Tridroid, the Octoptara Combat Tridroid and the Octoptara Magna Tridroid. The two variants were identical in everything except size and armaments. The Combat Tridroid was barely twice as tall as a clone trooper when standing at its full height, while the Magna Tridroid stood as tall as a five-story building and could crush a land speeder underfoot. You can actually see both variants in Revenge of the Sith. Magna Tridroids appear prominently in Mygito during the Order 66 sequence, while Combat Tridroids frequently appear in the background on Utapau. We're going to be discussing both, however, since they're pretty much the same in most respects. All Tridroids stood on three huge legs joined at a central column, which was topped by a large spherical head. The bulbous head presumably contained the droid's power plant, droid brain, and related facilities, and it seems to have been very heavily armored, with the heads of the Magna Tridroids able to withstand some pretty deep lightsaber cuts without sustaining critical damage. The central column of the Tridroid was ringed with three laser cannons or ordnance launchers at equistand intervals, each topped by one of the droid's three photoreceptor arrays. Combat Tridroids and some Magna Tridroids only had a single conventional photoreceptor mounted above each gun, while most Magna Tridroids instead featured a pair of unconventional stalk-shaped photoreceptors per weapon mount. In either configuration, these equidistant eyes gave the Tridroid a full 360 degree range of vision, making it impossible to flank. Its weapons and legs were also omnidirectional and, as such, these droids were highly maneuverable. In canon, some Magna Tridroids were equipped with rocket thrusters at the bottom of their central stalks, increasing their maneuverability even further by allowing them to fly over the battlefield. Tridroids came with a variety of weapons configurations. They always had three identical weapons, each mounted under one of the droid's main photoreceptors and they had no other weapons mounts, though they didn't need them due to their omnidirectional design. Combat Tridroids were usually equipped with three anti-personnel laser cannons, which were similar to those on the Republic ATRT. However, some of the smaller Octoptara droids instead featured three beam cannons, which, like the main weapons of homing spider droids, fired continuous energy beams at their targets, which the droids could maintain for quite a long time. This variant was notably deployed in the Battle of Coruscant. Magna Tridroids, as you might expect, usually featured much more powerful weapons. Some were seen to have simple laser cannons, like combat Tridroids, but these were much more powerful than the anti-personnel guns on the Magna Tridroids' smaller cousins. The laser cannons on Magna Tridroids were essentially medium artillery and they seemed to fire in sequence with the Tridroid rotating its weapons array after every shot or two, presumably to prevent the guns from overheating. Other Magna Tridroids boasted three heavy ordnance launchers belt fed from ammunition reserves built into the droid's head. These ordnance launchers carried 48 shells each and were incredibly powerful, able to destroy a UTAT or ATTE in a single shot. 
The ordnance launchers were dramatically more powerful than the laser cannons, but they had much more limited ammunition reserves. The legs of tridroids, especially magna tridroids, made up most of the droids' profile and were weapons in themselves, capable of crushing enemies underfoot. However, they were also the tridroids' weakness. Severing just one leg was sufficient to bring down a tridroid, as was dealing sufficient damage to the droid's central column, especially the part where the three legs met the main body. This made the tridroid a little less formidable. Despite their heavy armor and tremendous firepower, a single well-placed shot from just about any Republic vehicle could take one down. But as some clones found out the hard way, sometimes destroying an Octoptara droid just unleashed its most powerful weapon of all. The armored heads of Octoptara combat tridroids were sometimes filled with airborne viruses, biological weapons engineered by the Confederacy to be both highly contagious and extremely debilitating. That's right, these droids weren't just extremely dangerous armored vehicles, they were also walking war crimes. These virus droids, as the clones ended up nicknaming them, were designed to unleash their bioweapons when they were destroyed, immediately infecting all organics in the vicinity that didn't have breath masks or helmet seals equipped. Morality and the laws of war aside, this was a fairly clever tactic as it meant that clones had to be careful about destroying these droids even as they were peppered with laser cannon fire. Even when they did, they would have had a hard time pressing the advantage and advancing due to the contamination. Additionally, virus droids also had the ability to release their plagues prematurely, allowing them to charge into enemy lines and wreak havoc. The types of viruses employed with Octoptara droids are unknown, but the following passage from the Essential Guide to Warfare paints a grim picture of their effects. Veterans of battles such as Mikasta 3 and Uber 4 would never forget the sight of Octoptaras picking their way through the rubble. Shrouded in veils of deadly, acidic vapor that ate through body gloves in minutes and left clone troopers convulsing and dying. Some of the Octoptara droids seem to have carried less severe plagues as virus droids down in the Battle of Coruscant that fell into the lower levels of Galactic City caused an outbreak of molting among the city's avian inhabitants. But apparently nothing more severe, and certainly no convulsive deaths. General Grievous, who was a fan of using diseases as bioweapons and was a big war crime enjoyer in general, regularly deployed these virus-equipped Octoptara droids, but their use was actually controversial among Separatist leaders. Count Dooku advised against their use on the grounds that it was a really bad PR to regularly deploy war crime walkers. Newt Gunray and the Nemoidians and CIS leadership also vehemently opposed the use of plagues as a weapon, in their case because they didn't want to worsen the specious stereotype of Nemoidians as spreaders of disease. But let's circle back to discuss a topic we touched on earlier, the seeming uncommonality of Octoptara droids in the battlefield. Were they really that rare? And if so, why? The smaller combat tridroids were said in source books to have been the original and more common variant, but they're quite rare in documented appearances, only showing up for the Battle of Coruscant, the Battle of Utapau, and the aforementioned Battles of Mikasta 3 and Uber 4. They were apparently common enough for the virus variant to be infamous among the clones, but this just isn't reflected in Star Wars media. In any event, the combat tridroid was much less formidable than its larger cousin, except for the war crime ones, and it would make sense for them to be passed over in favor of other separatist light vehicles for many battles. Magna tridroids, on the other hand, were absolute units, even if they never brought viruses to a gunfight. They made notable appearances in the Battle of Christosis, the Battle of Mygido, and in canon, the Battle of Skako Minor but they also haven't appeared all that much in Star Wars media, though they're seen more frequently than their supposedly more common smaller cousins. It's safe to say that the Magna Tridroid was definitely underutilized by the CIS, especially considering the stopping power of that Ordnance Launcher variant. But at the same time, it makes sense that they would see limited use. They needed a lot of space for deployment, after all, and as the Battle of Christosis shows, they were remarkably easy to take down for such behemoths. 
So that's our look at the Octoptara Combat Tridroid and the Octoptara Magna Tridroid, the War Crime Walker and the Bane of Republic tanks. But what do you think? Would you have liked to see virus droids in Star Wars The Clone Wars? Do you think it would have been a cool addition? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.